Oh, thank you for me. Oh, no, Judy, that's not for you. Oh. <laughs> but we do have a gift for everyone, a new episode of Garden Time. <laughs> Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Terra Casa helping them kick off the season with their holiday open house. Later on in the show, we are going to be talking to Diana about how you too can brighten up the holidays for your home. And also coming up in the show, we'll be celebrating Mumbember at Lansu Chinese Garden. But coming up first, we are going to show you how to build a greenhouse. We are at the Greenhouse Catalog here in Brooks, Oregon, and I'm with Bev, and we are going to be talking about Solex greenhouses, which they sell, and how really easy they are to put together. Now, and they are easy, aren't they, Bev? Yes, they are. We actually had an 84-year-old lady put one together wow. by herself. <laughs> and, you know, the fun thing is, you can order them. They get there within a couple days. They're, they can be custom. They're easy. In fact, we're here in your warehouse where all the parts are. Correct. So now, what would be, when, when they place this order, they get it, what's the first step that, that they would go to putting it together? Well, first they're going to look at all the parts, which we just showed you, uh -huh. and then we have a parts list and they check off to make sure that they did, in fact, get everything. And it all comes in two boxes. This greenhouse comes in two boxes. Nice. And then it really is, as in fact, we're going to show some people here, this is really, the base of it is kind of laid out, but it comes mm -hmm. all separated and tell them how easy it is to put it together because you have color coding and stuff to help with that. Yes, we do. And this is one of the fittings, which it just happens to be a corner post. And if you notice, it has a red mark here. Yeah. That marking tells you which position you place the, this fitting. Okay. And all the parts, all, all the pipes have color coding. And for instance, this is a green one. So nice. that means it's a green base frame uh -huh. part. And this one is, is red. And so you put, in the case of this base frame, exactly, it's put that, that one simple. in. And, and you don't even you have to measure, this. do you? Just put all the Correct. way Correct. Well, Bev, that sounds really easy, so let's go over there and get the parts and get started. Okay. We did a little pre-assembly to make this a little bit, go a little bit uh -huh. faster today. So we're just gonna, you put yours in on that side, and you wanna seat it down all the way. Make sure it's seated down. That was okay. simple. And That's, this is the back, right? Yes, this will be a vent. Nice. So Bev, this is the door, right? Yes. And it goes in just like the other one did? Yes, but we, because we made some of it ahead, it's, we have to put it, this is gonna Slides go over. Slides in there. And the strip tie here is just to keep the door from swinging, yes, right? Yes, right. And it's just that simple. All right, let's move on to the next part. Okay. These are red pipes, uh -huh. so they become hanging rods. And if you want to put your end in down there okay. and just screw it in. Okay, so now what are these pieces, Beth? These are the ribs that form the sides of the greenhouse. Okay. So we have, we have eight ribs. There'll be four on each side. So the side ones go into PVC snap tees, and you want to make sure that it They're seats down. Seat down in there. That's okay. Okay. These don't feel like PVC. Well, these these eight are PVC. Uh huh. But the, the all of the frame that supports any weight is actually a protruded fiberglass material, so it's very sturdy. And what is the name of this piece, Beth? This is the top ridge frame. Uh huh. So the ribs are going to attach into this. So you can just kind of lay it up there. Okay. The ribs go into this top ridge frame. Well, that's pretty easy. I'm gonna let there you tighten you it up there. It's like Jurassic Park-ish. <laughs> so Bev, now this is the what I call the skin of the greenhouse, but tell Correct. us a little bit about what this product is. Okay, it's called Solex, and it's, it's as you can see, it has twin double walls. Uh -huh. It has a dead air space there, and that's what gives it this R value. It has the highest R value of, of any greenhouse covering that we know of. Nice. 
and it's sturdy. It's strong, it's very tough, so um, uh, hail cannot destroy it. Nice. It holds up very well in the wind. And um, it, it, uh, diff the main thing is that it diffuses the light so well. So tell us how so, we get it okay, on here. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is just stand this up. And if you, it, we want it to overlap about an inch okay. on each end. All right. Okay. So now, if you want to put a, a screw in down there and uh, on your on that end, and I'll put one in here. Come down about two inches. Okay. So we just need to put a few more screws in there. Okay, we're putting a spacer screw right here, and all we do is just barely get it started. And then we can set the next panel on top of this. All right, Bev, so now this is the second piece, and right. it just sets right on top right of this, right? Right up on right? top. So now this, this is, we're sliding this in to connect the two, right? Right. And it's pretty simple, it looks like. This is the H trim. Wow, it really does just slide right on through. Well, that really is simple. And now all we have to do is finish the other side, Bev, and then, then we're gonna be pretty much done. So let's go over there. Welcome to our greenhouse. It is now complete. And you know, Bev, it was really simple. And all we had to do to finish it up was put the ends on. I can carry them by myself, this one. It's very lightweight. So what do we do about wind, though? Well, we tie it down. We have a tie-down kit, and it includes, uh, on each corner, you have a screw-in anchor, uh -huh. and then it, you, you screw that to the corner of the greenhouse. Well, you know, Bev, with the, with the type of material that's used on the greenhouse, it really is very bright in here. It's almost like just wonderful. The wind isn't blowing in here, it's warm. And a great thing you mentioned was like, if you have a pot that is just too big to fit through the door, you just pick up the greenhouse and put over the pot. So they're very versatile as well. That is true. And you have all kinds of, uh, I, I love this window that we've gotten in now. Tell us about stuff, because you have all this kind of product to add to the greenhouse at Greenhouse Catalog. Right, we have, uh, we have shade cloth, we have, this is an automatic vent opener, which is solar powered, so you don't so need handy. any electricity. Um, we have base vents, um, we have, uh, the tie down kit that's everything and then of course really we have need. different kinds of thermometers and we even have little bench kits if you want to have a little thing inside the to grow plants yeah. on or you can also make your own benches if you want to for seedling startings so it it gives this much more it's really all inclusive yes. you know if you thought about well why don't i have a greenhouse i can't imagine why you don't but we would certainly invite you to go to gardentime.tv we'll click you over to the greenhouse catalog they have everything you need to get started it's very cost effective they're wonderful wonderful structures bev it is always a delight to see you and be out here thank you so much well thank you Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com. Standard TV and Appliance asks, what do you want in new appliances? Do you want GE's gas, electric, convection, induction, stainless steel, slate, French door, Energy Star, top load, front load, high efficiency, or huge capacity? Refresh and save with GE Cafe. Upgrade your kitchen and save up to $1,500 when you buy four GE Cafe appliances. Standard TV and appliance. Well, tis the season to be decorating our house, and I'm at Terra Casa with Diana. And Diana, we always come out here, find the most beautiful things for our home and garden. But being the holidays, you have some really good ideas for us. We've got a few fun things this year <laughs> and really fun ways to decorate your home. 
This is one of them. These are um, our churches Beautiful. and they are LED lit. Um, there's a variety of sizes and shapes and colors and you can plug them into each other like you do with a, um, a Christmas light Perfect. and there's greenery on some of them. There's sticks. Um, there, there's, it's a really fun story. And where would we put them in our house? What's a great way to, to de um, decorate with them? I picture them on a fireplace hearth or oh. a fireplace mantle. Um, you could do two or three smaller ones on a table in your in your dining room. They, I think anywhere in your home they would make a great story. Uh -huh. Well, you have so many things to talk about, but I really want to go talk about these lanterns that you have on okay. the other side of the store. So let's go over there. Okay. Now, Diana, this is a new take on a snow globe. They're so cool. Well, back when we were little, we had to shake them, <laughs> right? Manual, right? <laughs> I know. But now they have battery-operated ones, so and these are called um, snow globe water lanterns, ah. and they all have a different scene in them, and they um, are battery-operated. Some of them actually have music to go with. Oh, nice. And they come in a variety of shapes and sizes and with little different scenes with Santas and snowmen and nutcrackers and birds and... All kinds of fun things. Uh, and the glitter, I think, really adds to it. It's not oh. just snow, it's glitter. It's the glitter and, yeah, it's it's very, cap captures your attention it for sure. sure. It's it's fun. I think it'd be fun for kids to sit and watch, too. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. And Christmas is all about lighting. And you have another kind of lighting here. These are really attractive, too. We have a lot of things that light up in the <laughs> store this year. Uh, this is called uh, Stony Creek. Um, it's, a, it's a line of glass items that light from within with a brush LED light inside and there's a lot of different shapes and sizes and um, themes. There's birdhouses and cardinals and woodsy themes with pine cones and it's just it's really fun. There's some that are whimsical and some that are a little more um, sentimental. They are and I want to go see these other ones because those are cute too. Those so let's go over there. Okay. Diana, these are some more kind of music boxes and little scenes. They're darling. These are really fun. So each of these little scenes um, light up and they play music as well. So we have the little skaters. We have um, Santa with his making his uh, gifts inside. There's just a fun little variety of things um, that you can set up in your house. Kids love oh, these. Oh, sure, sure. And really, it all gets us into the mood. All of these pieces that can decorate our house. And you have a special event that will help us even more get into the mood. We are having our holiday open house. Oh. Oh, kick great. off this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Our regular store hours are 10 to 6 Saturday and 11 to 5 Sunday, and there'll be special savings throughout the store. Uh, well, you have to watch the rest of the show, and then come to Terra Casa in downtown Damascus and get in on all the festivities with your family and your friends. And so to go to gardentime.tv, we'll click over their website, and you can find out all that information. Thanks so much. Have a lovely time. Thank you, Judy. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Your center for home and garden decor, Garden Gallery Ironworks has everything you need to make your home a showcase. For the inside, we have a great selection of Kelly Ray Roberts items, and our farmhouse style department is full of one-of-a-kind gifts. For the outside, we have arbors, trellises, planting beds, and garden decor. Everything to make your neighbors jealous. Check out our new website and then come visit us in Hubbard. Garden Gallery Ironworks. Extend your growing season and escape to your own garden retreat in a Solex greenhouse from the Greenhouse Catalog. There is nothing like the taste of a bright, red, juicy, homegrown tomato. The bright, warm, durable design of a Solex greenhouse provides plenty of room to nurture your plants and enjoy your passion for years. Choose from five Solex greenhouse models or build your own with Solex panels. For all your gardening, greenhouse, and specialty growing needs, visit GreenhouseCatalog.com or give us a call. Many of you have heard about our Garden Time Tours. We have taken so many viewers around the world and around the Pacific Northwest. Now we are so proud to announce our new tour that is happening in September of 2019 to Northern Italy and the French Riviera. Our tour begins the 13th of September as we head to Europe. We say buongiorno to Italy as we start our tour in Verena on Lake Como. 
Our three days here are filled with visits to incredible public and private gardens in what is considered the most beautiful part of Italy. Here we will visit Villa Carlotta, Villa Melzi, and Villa Balbianello, which has been featured in many Hollywood films. We will even have an optional cooking class for those who want to try their hands at authentic Italian cooking. We'll also enjoy a tour of historic Bellagio. Next, we will travel to the Mediterranean and the town of Minton, sheltered by the Maritime Alps and averaging 360 days of sunshine a year, this area has one of the mildest climates in Europe. Oranges and lemons thrive here and the gardens contain a host of unusual and tropical plants. During our three days in Minton, we will see many private gardens and even take a side trip to Monaco to stroll the exotic gardens and the Observation Cave. We will also stop by the dazzling Rothschild Gardens and Villa. This villa contains numerous garden rooms surrounding the amazing villa. Then we travel to Arles in Provence. Arles has seven major UNESCO sites, including the amazing Roman Amphitheater. We will also walk in the footsteps of Van Gogh and Picasso. During our four days in Arles, we will stop at a local outdoor market, visit sites in the French countryside, and also visit the private garden at La Louvre, which has been classified as one of the most notable gardens of France. We then head to Aix-en-Provence, the birthplace of Paul Cézanne. Their charming old town is one of the top tourist destinations in France. We finally arrive in Nice for our final two nights on the tour. Travelers can relax or visit the old town and the flower market. There are numerous other options for those who want a day trip to other locations along the French Riviera. This trip is going to fill up fast, so if you sign up before the end of this year, you can save $250 per person. So to reserve your space and to get more details, please go to the Garden Time website to the tours page. We hope that you can join us in September of 2019. It is Mumvember at Lansu Chinese Garden, and we're usually at the garden, but today we're at the growing facility with Mandy, who is the head grower here. This is an amazing place. How many different plants do you have here? So we have about 155 different cultivars of mums, wow. all 13 different classes. Um, in total, we grow about 1,000 plants each year in wow. two-gallon pots. And I know that you will be bringing in fresh plants. There's plants right now at the garden, and then you'll be bringing in fresh plants for the whole month. So really, you just have a really big um, place here to do that. And so can you kind of tell us how these start? Because these are huge plants. They're about four foot tall, three and a half foot tall. So how yeah. do you start them? So we actually start them at the end of March. Uh, we start each of these from um, cuttings, about four inch cuttings. And then over time, we up pot them gradually into larger pots. We go through staking. It's about a nine month process that wow. we go through between staking, disc budding, fertilizing, um, and everything. It, it takes a lot of work to put this together. And you do it not just yourself, you have a lot of volunteers that come out and help too. I have 10 dedicated volunteers oh, that's that I'm wonderful. so thankful for that show up every week. And what is this one called? This is beautiful, it's so lacy. So this here, it's called Chesapeake. Um, and this is one that you can find, um, you could find with the Chrysanthemum Society, you can also find it with uh, King's Mums. We grow ours from, from cuttings. Not all of these are grown from cuttings, but a lot of these that you do see in our greenhouse, we've done from cuttings each. Year. And then how do you get the big flowers? Because I see a lot oh, yeah. of flowers, so do you have to do something special? That's a great question. And this is a great example because I haven't yet disbudded um, this plant quite yet. Just haven't gotten to it. But what we do is we actually will go through, I know it's sad to see this, oh, but yeah, we yeah. go through and we will take off some of these buds. And what happens is that it, it makes all of the energy go up the stem and go to this one big flower. Um, puts all the energy to that flower. Ah. So to learn more about this, you have to go to the garden, but to learn all about what's going on at Lansu, we're going to toss it to William and he's going to talk with Justin. Thanks so much, Mandy. It's thank beautiful. You. Well, thank you so much, Judy, and what a great job Mandy is doing here. And now I am here with Justin. And Justin, you know, November is Mumvember at Lansu, but this, this coming weekend is exceptionally fun. Tell me what's going on. So this weekend we have the Ninth Moon Floral Designers Showcase. And so the garden has teamed up with uh, Leanne Kessler and the Floral Design Institute to put on this amazing 
showcase of designs where we're including 25 designers from around the country and one from China. Um, and uh, what um, people can do is come by the garden this weekend, Saturday and Sunday and take a look at these wonderful floral designs and actually vote on your favorite. Wow. And by the end of the day on uh, Sunday at three o'clock, we'll announce the People Choice uh, Award winner for that weekend. And you know, I have to say, we have been there so many times, we at Garden Time go to this event because it is breathtaking and every year something new comes up and I go, wow, I can't believe that. But it's not just this weekend, all month long things are going on. So all month long, uh, we have things happening at, at Lansu. We have our Mumvember talk series. And so every Saturday, uh, one of the horticulturalists will be having a, uh, giving a talk rather on uh, mums it will be November 10th. And on November 17th, uh, the uh, trees and the flowers of fragrance in the garden. And then I'll be giving a talk on Thanksgiving Saturday, the 24th, uh, about the three friends of winter, which is plum, pine, and bamboo. So Justin, there is also a world premiere happening of a book called Asian Allure. Tell me about that. Yes, uh, so this weekend uh, you can be there for the launch of Asian Allure, which uh, features three of our featured designers at Ninth Moon, uh, Greg Lum, Lily Chan, and Jeannie Ha. So you know, for more information on this absolutely beautiful event, you can go to gardentime.tv and we will click you over to their website. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. They had to take the car, they had to get it open with the jaws of life, take me out on a backboard, took me to a Trauma One Center. I absolutely feel like the Subaru saved my life. Well, we, we trust Capital. We trust our salesperson here, Jackie. Jackie's great. I believe that she really cares about us. She teaches me about the Subaru. Our, our way, way on, on the, the parkway. parkway. Don't let the cold and wet get you this winter. Warm up to a season of heat with Grimm's Fuel. Grimm's has plenty of wood and heating oil ready to deliver to keep you warm all winter long. Stay warm and cozy with Grimm's Fuel. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, festive and magical. Your holiday season begins at Owl's Garden and Home. Join us for our evening of lights. Shop Christmas ornaments from designer decorated trees, delight and poinsettias fresh from our local farm. Try ice apples and other tasty treats and enjoy savings throughout the store. Welcome the joys of the season with your whole family. Come celebrate our evening of lights at Owl's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. Well, it is a great delight of mine to be out here at Barn Owl Nursery with Chris. And Chris, we are going to be talking about fall planting, but not trees and shrubs this time. We're going to be talking about herbs, specifically some evergreen ones that you have. So yes. jump right in, first of all, and Tell me about the herbs that you picked out. Well, I thought a bay tree would be nice to have, and especially in the winter for all those soups and stews, we right. could harvest those leaves all through the season. And th they can get big. Yes, they can. Like the one right behind yes, us over there. Yes, <laughs> I have one planted in a barrel, and it has survived several years there now. Lovely, and does lovely. very well. And then what is and this And rosemary, and this is um, particularly rosemary arp, is very hardy through a hard winter. And um, you can be picking fresh rosemary through Christmas and nice, use that. Nice, nice, lovely. What else you got there? And we have several thymes, but um, one of them is a French thyme, which is a nice one for culinary purposes, a silver thyme for the variegation in the foliage, Beautiful. as well as the creeping lemon thyme with a little bit of variegated foliage. All are culinary la uh, thymes and would be wonderful in um, your soups and stews. And so they're all, they're all edible then with yes. the cooking part of it. So you can even get fancy with all those colored ones. Absolutely. That'd be stunning in the garden. Mm -hmm. And they're Lovely. evergreen in the garden. So they're adding some color through their foliage. And this looks like another type of rosemary, a couple of them. It is. This is a creeping variety. And right now it has some wonderful bright blooms on them. And this is what's so nice about rosemary is she blooms in the spring and again in the fall. Nice, beautiful indeed. And the other, the front, that looks more like sages to me. Yes. 
this. We have four different sages, and the purple sage adds a nice variety of color with the foliage. Um, you can go from a larger leaf bear garden sage to a dwarf green and um, just a garden sage. All are culinary and all are evergreen. And they really are fine to use year-round. If they're not frozen or covered in snow, you can go out pick them, take yes. them in, and, and cook with them. Every year I make my uh, turkey dressing with fresh sage. Well, you know, we're standing in the part of, of your display garden, is what I call it, because it's lovely, that has a lot of herbs that are in pots. So that, that's a good thing to do, too, if you want to, first Yes, it is. You can grow quite a few in a barrel. And this is my Herbs de Provence garden with thyme and sage. Stunning. And next to a large rosemary and some, a little bit of oregano. And even though it's not going to be hardy, you have a like a African basil in another part of your garden I that do. is covered in bees right now because yes. I saw some bees even here. The pollinators are going to love. They are going to herbs. love having winter blooms. Right, right. And then what would you do though, like say with these huge rosemaries in these two pots behind us, what is it that you would be doing as far as taking care of them in the fall? Well, as you're clipping, you can take a good healthy sprig of each one of these and that's going to encourage new growth and you have a nice um, uh, am amount to use for culinary purposes as you are encouraging new growth. And yeah. if, it, if it's going to be fine though, because you know, we tell people, you know, don't prune it this time of year because the new growth might freeze off, but yes. that's not a concern with the herbs but These are much. fairly hardy um, culinary herbs that can be clipped year round. And it's not, tell me again, how, is there a specific way that you would suggest to plant these? Well, you want to only plant them as deep as the pot, so you don't want to bury the roots any further than what is showing in sure, the pot. Sure, sure. And then is there is there a special fertilizer you use Low or anything nitrogen, like that Low nitrogen, but you really don't need to fertilize much in the fall or right. winter months. Well, there you have it. You know, we, we do always promote all kinds of planting in the fall because we believe in it. And I have to say, planting herbs is a new concept to me. I don't know why I didn't think about it, but if you're interested in getting some herbs in early, so next year they're even bigger and brighter and more beautiful, all you have to do is go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to uh, Chris's website of Barn Owl Nursery and gather more information and then start planting that herb garden right now for next year. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Willem. We want to thank you for watching today, and we want to thank Tara Casa for letting us hang out. And don't forget about their holiday open house happening today and tomorrow. And we also wanted to remind you that we are coming up on our 500th episode, and we are going to have a celebration on November 17th. For more information about that or today's show, you can always go to Gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. Thousand one hundred and twelve, one thousand one hundred thirteen. William, what? what are you counting? I'm counting all of our wonderful friends on Facebook. And we invite everyone to go to Facebook and like us and follow us. All you have to do is go to gardentime.tv and hit the Facebook icon, which is in the top right hand corner. It's the best place to get the most updated information on Garden Time. So all you have to do is click us and like us. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.